Welcome, Peter. And I invite all of you to uh, let yourself be named Peter the Rock today during our service, and uh, that'll become obvious later. Good to have you here, and blessings to you, no matter which home where you live, you as Peter this day. God be with you. Reminder again to uh, check our website uh, regularly for uh, links to all the various things coming up, the Sunday morning worship, the uh, Wednesday evening communion uh, service. Uh, we also have uh, Zoom schedules for a number of different groups. Uh, uh, a couple of the ones everybody's welcome to, Tuesday mornings at 8.30, a Bible study. Uh, we have a youth gathering uh, each uh, Sunday at, at noon uh, by Zoom uh, as well. I want to welcome our... Uh, uh, again, I don't name them every uh, Sunday, but uh, uh, the crew of us who uh, uh, lead you in worship on, on Sunday mornings here. Uh, many of you uh, uh, said goodbye to uh, Wren after uh, uh, she left uh, to uh, be in college here. But we uh, are so glad to have her sister Quinn filling in. So thank you so much, uh, Quinn, for being with us. Uh, Linnea. Good to have uh, you here, Joseph, as our, our music uh, director here. Adam is a uh, technology uh, person here, uh, and uh, Sam and myself with uh, uh, liturgy and preaching, etc. Uh, David Barella on the organ. So thank you all for being part of this uh, service uh, together here. Uh, just one more um, announcement uh, piece uh, every Thursday. Uh, we upload a, a new uh, uh, pop-up music for the soul piece, about 20 minutes of some just some beautiful music. Uh, this last Thursday, um, a young woman whose name I uh, can't pretend to pronounce, uh, she's back in Spain now, her home. Uh, she's getting stuck there with the pandemic uh, right now. She is the, uh, the violinist in this last week. You know, ah, it's just gorgeous uh, music. I also want to note, a week ago, this last uh, Thursday, uh, the uh, upload was of uh, our own uh, Dr. Barella. Uh, he uh, played uh, four pieces, uh, and uh, I, I'd like as many of you as can to watch that because you'll just learn a bunch more about, uh, David, we so value your presence with us here, and you let us see your studio uh, in your garage and, and your decorations and your organ, this wonderful instrument there that you uh, love to play. Uh, Dr. Brella has, uh, is, has for years, many years, been um, recording a, a special music for uh, YouTube presentations, and he's, he's uh, approaching 500 um, now uh, music pieces uh, on YouTube, and, and these four were uh, now in preparation uh, for that. So I invite you to uh, check on that. Uh, Sam, let's prepare for worship today. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. And now may we receive the forgiveness of God. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives all our sins. I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's sing together. I want to walk as a child of the light.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for your Son who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by this example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us the strength to follow your commands through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Our first reading today is from Romans chapter 12. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought of what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. God's word for us. gospel uh, today is written in Matthew chapter 16. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him saying, God forbid it, Lord. This must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me, for you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If you want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. God's Gospel Word. Jerusalem, just like 
Thank you. I want to be ready. Peter wanted to be ready. Yeah. So there's this uh, big church in the Midwest, uh, quite progressive. Uh, they had it on their minds, uh, what lots of churches do. They wanted to grow. They wanted to be famous. They wanted to be successful. They wanted to have lots of new members and set records and attendance and all that. Well, they were doing pretty well already, but they hired a, a marketing firm. They uh, checked out those in town and uh, um, chose one that was uh, known to have great success in, in, uh, in marketing. Uh, so this outfit came to the church and looked around, observed uh, worship services, did some surveys, uh, interviewed uh, some people, members, and, and non. And then they came back to the church with this recommendation. They said, we suggest that you take all the crosses out of church. They're uh, probably offensive to a lot of young people these days, and, and we think that would make more people feel comfortable coming to church if there wasn't that symbol here that kind of has a bad reputation, you know, the cross, kind of, ouch. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know if the church took the advice of this marketing firm. But I can understand the temptation that they had to struggle with. The temptation to be successful, to be have, have people clamoring to be with them, to follow them, be part of, of their group. The temptation for that successful, beautiful experience. I note the temptation because Peter got stuck with the same temptation. And I invite you to keep the idea of the temptation of the cross, of the non-cross, of getting rid of the crosses. Keep that in your mind for a moment here. Let's catch up with the story of Peter. Sam, I'm going to borrow from uh, your gospel lesson from, from last week, which is in the same 16th chapter of Matthew, the verses right before our text for today. And in, in that uh, gospel lesson uh, last week, I'll just uh, remind you, um, where uh, Jesus was with his disciples and he asked them, who do people say that I am? They responded, oh, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, some say Jeremiah or one of the prophets. And, but who do you say that I am? Jesus asked them. And Peter is the one who responded right away. You're the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, whoa, you are right, Peter. And you didn't get that just out of wishful thinking. You got wisdom from God for that. And upon your faith, I'm going to build my church. Way to go, Peter. Yeah. So now we start our text today. Peter's kind of floating about a foot above the ground. Big tap on the shoulder from, from Jesus. He's feeling good about himself. And now Jesus still with the disciples. I'll just read it the way it is here, uh, these next verses then. From that time on, after Peter confessed that Jesus was the Messiah, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. Those words that Jesus just told his disciples is a prediction of the passion. Jesus, in the book of Matthew here, Four times he brings up, uses almost those exact same words each time, little changes, to tell his disciples they need to get used to this idea. They need to learn it, accept it, that he has to go through this stuff. He's going to be framed, railroaded, taken to court, shamed, lied about. He's going to suffer greatly physically as well as the shame of the public. And then he's going to be killed. And then he's going to rise again, Jesus said. This is too much of a change for Peter. He knew about the part of what Jesus was so far that they'd been living with. They walked about the countryside. Crowds gathered and listened day after day. And Jesus did his loving, caring, 
healing peace with all the people. And he taught them in parables and he taught them truths that amazed them and amazed Peter and all the disciples. And the crowds got bigger and the church leaders got more angry. But his popularity grew and Peter is thinking, yeah, the leader of this incredible movement on the face of the earth around here, he just praised me. He just told me I was great. And now he is telling me, now look what comes next, now that he's for the first time heard this prediction of Jesus having to suffer and die. He says, that can't happen. That would end it all. I want to be part of the group that exists now with people coming in huge numbers to see Jesus, to be helped by him, but to follow him, to be his people. And Peter was one of the leaders of the group. And when Peter hears that Jesus was going to die, that was too much. That's going to end it all. See, that's the cross story. That's getting rid of the crosses if you take away that stuff. Let's keep it the way it was. We don't need this suffering and death stuff. We need Jesus, the loving hero. So Peter can't handle it. The temptation is too great for him to, I don't want the cross part. Let's just stay where we were. And Jesus' response to him is immediate. Get behind me, Satan. Famous line, one of the clumsy lines of scripture, one of those that we don't like to hear Jesus say, but he did. Get behind me, Satan. Let's look at that phrase for a moment here. The Satan part, that's because Peter gave in to the temptation back in chapter four of Matthew, when Jesus was tempted by Satan, Satan was in that one too, and Jesus, and Satan tempted Jesus. Jesus said, no. He said no to the three temptations, and then Satan, get out of here. Go. Go. Jesus did not give in to the temptation because much of that was too for Jesus to find ease and power and authority. Jesus says, no. Get away from me, Satan. Here, Peter has a similar temptation. And so Jesus is saying, Hey, that stuff that's bothering you, Peter, what you're willing to give away, that's what, that's what Satan wants us to get rid of. Satan wants us to get rid of the cross, wants us to get rid of the sacrifice of God's love for the people, of forgiveness. Satan just wants us not to believe in that stuff. It's uncomfortable, takes away popularity, he would tell us. Peter now has to think it through. He was tempted to throw away the cross, he blew it, and Jesus' response to him was, you're acting like Satan. That's what Satan wants us to believe, Peter. So away with that. But note the other part of, of his saying. He says, get behind me. Now, usually when we hear that, we put in our own uh, tone of voice. Get behind me, Satan. It's all anger. It's all shame and shove away, push away. But actually that phrase in the Greek means follow in behind me. See? We can, it can mean that in English too. But when we throw in our imagination, we don't hear it that way. We hear, get out of here, Peter. But he's saying to Peter, yeah, you're picking up the same stuff Satan was, but no, set that aside. Instead of that, follow in behind me. Don't get in front of me. You're kind of a loudmouth, you know, Peter. You have a lot of strength. You're a leader among the disciples and other people. Everybody pays attention to you. But now I'm telling you, I need to be the leader. This has to happen the way God knows it has to happen. This has to go through with the suffering and the death. That needs to be part of it. And that's my role, Peter. Let that go. And you, follow me. Pick up what your leader, Jesus, the Savior, is saying, what he must do. And you become part of that 
purpose, that path, that program, that picking up the cross. You now, Peter, have a new part of the story that you have to figure out how to fit in. You've liked the good easy part with the popularity and authority and prestige so far. Now finish the story where we set aside the lie that those are the things that give life and get back to the truth which hurts. It's about sacrifice and God's love that is bigger than popularity. All of those cheap things that Satan wants to give us. Peter, pick up on the cross and pick up on following me. Yeah. The cross is a big deal. We don't often love it, but sometimes we set aside the strange picture that it has. So we have crosses all over the place here. Sorry, we haven't invited a marketing firm in to give us any other advice, but we wouldn't listen to it anyway. There are so many crosses just in this room. I was counting this morning, many, many dozen. The ones we could see, different ones, different, uh, I see three different kinds on the altar. We have the three big ones behind uh, uh, the altar here, uh, the banners, uh, the main architecture of those is a cross. I'm looking over here, well, down this wall here. We have a group here who decorates the sanctuary during different seasons. Right now in this season, they have 10 poster boards here, and they have crosses on them. So we have 10 different crosses here. They have names on them. Here's the cross with a crown on it. It's the Alpha and Omega cross, the Celtic cross, the Anchor cross. All of these crosses have a story. They're not just artists being fancy. They are from cultures, events in history, groups of people who have suffered in some cases, martyrs, in others people who have struggled, in others who have conquered, in others who have grown in faith in very difficult ways. And the design for a cross came out of because of who they were, where they lived, and the story of their faith. So we have crosses all over the place. All the hymnals have on the ends of several pews. A few years ago, I got a gift from, from one of you. Uh, it's been on my wall all along. Has about 15 crosses on it, and they're all different from each other. A cross has a story. The main story is Jesus. But the people who bake the cross and put it up on their hearts and their walls, they have a story about Jesus from it. We're not losing the cross. The trick today is to see the cross as that which gives the fullest meaning to all of Jesus' stories and to Peter. Peter got the first part great and got commended for it enough so that Jesus said, on your faith, Peter, I'm going to build my church. Peter would think, whoa, I obviously have it all figured out. And just a short time later, Jesus tells Peter, you still have some more to learn, Peter. That stuff that you just referred to, uh, that I shouldn't die, I shouldn't suffer, that has to go. We need to have the sacrifice, God's love in the story. It's what makes the story your story, Peter. Now you have it all. And it's going to take you a while to figure it out. And you're going to mess it up lots of times. Just wait and see. But it's still your story. That's the story that's going to come and lift you up every time you fall down. I told you at the beginning that think of yourself as Peter today. Do you know the whole story of the gospel? I hope you really like that first part. Who Jesus is as this incredible teacher, leader, loving person who heals and lifts people up and puts families back together and counsels and teaches and feeds. Whoa. And the crowds come and gather. You also need to know this part we don't pay enough attention to sometimes. We are have to today. We want to make sure we don't let Satan become our voice. We need to get that idiot out of here. We need to let the cross happen. Put it on our wall. Well, it's a little tricky what we do with the cross. 
Lots of crosses look kind of ugly and shabby and scary like they really were in reality. We also wear very nice jewelry in the shape of crosses. We might have a lapel pin or, or a necklace or, or um, our earrings. We may have pictures on our walls of beautiful crosses. And oftentimes we see a singer sing or an athlete wearing a cross. Afterward, we wonder, wonder what that cross really means to that person. That's okay. We hope and lift up each other that that cross has the full meaning, the one Peter got to know this day. So this day, I encourage you, if you have jewelry, wear it. But remember why you're wearing it. If you have pictures, if you have crosses, use them, put them up there. But then study what it's about and make sure that's part of the picture. And you are Peter. And you too will have a faith of the church. And Jesus will come to you also and say, well done. Welcome into my family, you forgiven sinner, you. We are with God eternally. Blessings to you this day, Peter. Amen. That cross is foolishness, the Bible says, to those who are perishing. But to us who are being saved, it's the power of God. And Paul says that I may preach Christ and him crucified. That cross is what makes us a church family. That cross is what is on you and me today that calls us to be the disciples of Christ. Let us offer the prayers of the church. 
Gracious God, we thank you for the cross of Christ. We thank you for that love that drove you to that cross. That as you hung up on that cross, you had each one of us in your mind. And you've made a way, you've made it possible for all of us to become part of the body of Christ, to become part of your body because of your obedience, even the obedience to hang on that cross. God of faithfulness, you bid your people to follow Jesus Christ. Set the minds of your church on the divine things. Grant us trust in you that we may lose our lives for the sake of Christ and thereby discover the joy in the life through him. God of wonder, the earth is yours and all that is in it. Heal your creation and give us eyes to see the world as you do. As the seasons change, Pattern the rhythm of our lives in harmony with all creation. O oh God, we lift up all the nations. You call us to live peaceably with all. Give us ears to hear one another, even those that we name as enemies. Fill all leaders with mercy and understanding that they advocate and genuinely care for those who are poor and most vulnerable in their communities. We especially lift up our nation today. Lord, heal our divisions. Bring us under the cross that we may live as one nation under God, indivisible. Take away the things that divide us, break down the walls, and all the boundaries we artificially put between each one of us. Help us to be drawn by the same love that you have for all humanity, to care for each other. God of salvation, you promise to deliver us and we ask that you give us, especially those who suffer, a strong sense of your presence and love and accompany those who are uncertain. Raise the spirit of those who are despairing and heal all who are sick. We cry to you, O oh Lord, even as a church family, that you touch each one of our families, those going through hard times because of the pandemic or because of the unrest across our nation or because of the terrible diagnosis of cancer or other ailments. May your hand be upon each one of our families, Lord. May you meet each one of us at our points of need. Strengthen us as a church family. And we pray for our community also, that the life that thrives and is among us will start to spread to the community and the society around us. God of community, help us to live in community with those that you bring and draw closer to us. Even with strangers, some of whom we meet when we go out to buy groceries or the other places. May your heart become one with ours. May your heartbeat be our heartbeat. Lord, for those who hunger thirst and for those who doubt or are terrified, 
and for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, and for caregivers that all experience the healing and comfort given through Christ. Especially we pray for Karen Wesson, Phyllis Bowman, Rhonda Smith, June Brady, Barbara Atkinson, Marianne Prey, Brady Schweitzer, Bryson Hauser, Shaman Toma, Shelley Giles, Benjamin Minaski, Jack Jacobson, Susan Merrickey, Janice Schneider, Dennis Schott, Laurel Ramsey, Chris Schneider, Sig Scotland, Bonaline Anderson, Claude Wesson, Betsy Palmer, Marge Scotland. And Lord, also, we bring before you these persons whose names we share out loud or hold in the quiet of our hearts. In the sudden hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now let us pray as our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us... Now receive the blessing of God. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, no powers, no height, no depth, no anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of Christ in, in Christ Jesus. God the Creator, Jesus the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen.